Tomo News presents the future of farm technology. Green Tech Vertical Farms are coming to North Texas. A next generation farming company is planning to be the first to offer vertically grown local produce on a large scale. Forbes reports Eden Green aims to grow produce in vertical lines in a greenhouse to supply different large chain grocery stores. Conventional soil based farms have an average of two harvests a year, while Eden Green expects to have around 10 to 15 harvests a year. Their first produce line, Crisply, will include vegetables such as lettuce, stevia plants, and other greens. Each plant will be enclosed in a soil-free microclimate bubble, free of chemicals, pesticides, and herbicides. The company has come up with a technology to enable the plants to feed on a steady flow of nutrient-filled water and natural sunlight instead of LED lights. Eden Green Technology says the produce is picked and packaged on the same day, unlike traditional retailers where the process can take up to nine days. For now, the vertically grown produce can be found at Walmarts across Texas starting this month. Growing vegetables in an innovative way can make you very rich. San Francisco startup Plenty, which specializes in vertical farming, has secured 200 million US dollars from investors. Among the investors are Japanese media corporation SoftBank, Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, and Amazon. Plenty's farming design allows plants to grow vertically on the sides of a tall tower. Lights are also arranged vertically to give plants as much exposure as possible. The vertical farm can grow up to 350 times more produce than conventional farming methods in the same amount of space. Plenty is planning on building indoor vertical farms, covering an area as large as five acres, which is roughly the size of larger supermarkets such as Walmart. The vertical farms will be built next to large cities in order to reduce delivery times of the produce. Plenty was founded in 2013 and has offices in San Francisco and Wyoming. The firm plans to distribute its vertically grown food starting this fall. Indoor vertical farm near New York City uses less water and produces more. The world's largest indoor vertical farm is well on its way to producing millions of pounds of food a year while using less water. Last December, Arrow Farms Incorporated secured $20 million of venture funding, paving the way for its 70,000 square foot facility in Newark, New Jersey. Now, the company is on track to produce 2 million pounds of food a year. The facility houses an efficient aeroponic vertical farm system that uses 95% less water than conventional commercial field farms and 40% less than hydroponic farms. The farms use no sunlight or soil. Instead, the plants are housed on shelves and sprout out of a cloth medium made of post-consumer recycled plastic. Each cloth takes 24 plastic water bottles out of the waste stream. An aeroponic system mists the plant's roots with water, nutrients, and oxygen. The closed system allows the farm to use less water. An LED lighting system is programmed to create a specific light recipe for each plant. This gives the greens the exact spectrum, intensity, and frequency they need for photosynthesis in the most energy efficient way possible. The programmed lights allow farmers to control the size, shape, texture, color, flavor, and nutrition of the foods produced. The cloth medium separates the plants from the nutrient-rich mists, allowing for fresh, clean, and dry produce to be harvested. Once harvested, the cloth medium can be fully sanitized and reused on new crops. By using the aeroponic and LED systems, farmers can monitor plant growth and tweak and track changes to allow for further improvements to the system. The AeroFarm system is also customizable. The company hopes to build farms in different sizes and configurations to grow food in varied locations with the most efficient yield per square foot, no matter the space. AeroFarms aims to have 25 facilities around the world in five years. The company's farms can each rotate among 22 varieties of crops a year. World's largest vertical farm set to open in New Jersey. The largest indoor vertical farm in the world is set to open in Newark later this year. The farm will reportedly be able to grow 2 million pounds of pesticide-free produce each year. The 69,000 square foot vertical farm is being built on the site of an old steel factory in the Ironbound neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey. In a vertical farm, the plants are rooted in reusable microfleece cloth and do not require soil. The crops are sprayed by nutrient-rich mist and illuminated by LED lights. 
The vertical farm is 75 times more productive per square foot and uses 95% less water than a conventional open field farm. The $30 million renovation project will bring jobs to Newark and fresh food to New Jersey. The project hopes to create 78 jobs in the city by the end of 2015. Solar-powered floating farms could help feed the world. Barcelona-based company Forward Thinking Architecture has developed a solar-powered floating farm system that could ease growing global food demand. Smart Floating Farms, or SFF, was inspired by traditional grid-shaped fish farms in Asia. Each SFF is 200 meters wide and 350 meters long, roughly the size of six football fields. They can be connected to form a cluster of modules. Photovoltaic panels are installed on the top level to harvest sunlight for electricity, and it has rainwater collectors for irrigation purposes. Other renewable energy technologies such as micro wind turbines may also be added. The second level is a greenhouse for the vegetables, which are grown without soil under the hydroponic system. The plants receive natural light from the skylight opening. The ground level is used as a fish farm on the open sea and features a fish egg hatchery, a slaughterhouse and a storage room for the fish. By using farms in nearby waters as a food source, the SFF can help reduce reliance on imported food. All the modules are centrally controlled by software via cloud technology. The production data will be analyzed and can be used to make comparisons on the food needs for specific cities. Each SFF is estimated to have a maximum production of just over 8 tons of vegetables and slightly over 1.7 tons of fish per year. The floating farms are ideal for densely populated cities near coastal areas, such as Los Angeles, New York, Tokyo, Singapore, and Hong Kong. As the world's population increases, food demand is expected to increase 50% by 2030 and 70% by 2050. Australia develops robots that can herd cattle. Australian researchers have developed a special robot that can herd cattle on large rugged terrain. The Swagbot is a battery-operated omnidirectional ground vehicle. It can move as fast as 20 kilometers per hour on smooth terrain, as well as navigate through rugged terrain. The creators of the device are working on algorithms that will allow the Swagbot to detect changes in body temperature and the posture of the cattle in order to monitor their health. It will also be equipped with color and shape sensors to identify good pasture for the cattle. If the algorithms are tested successfully, the Swagbot will be the first robot in the world able to monitor the health of livestock. South Korea and Egypt are building an agricultural city in the desert. Two unlikely partners are in a scientific collaboration that could see a desert turn green within the next half year. South Korea and Egypt are teaming up to build an agricultural city in the North African nation's Katara Depression sinkhole. The six-month, $10 billion project will see 50,000 greenhouses constructed by Egyptian workers and managed by Korean experts. Several solar and desalinization plants are expected to be built at the site. The project will also see an attempt to produce food and the sugar alternative Stevia. If the plan is successful, it could be seen as a model for future anti-desertification projects. Drones sow the seeds for a greener future. Scientists in India plan to turn a difficult-to-reach area near Bangalore into a lush green forest by dropping seeds from drones into the soil. The first drone seed bombing experiment took place on June 5th to mark World Environment Day. Researchers from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore will drop seed bombs on an arid hill range north of the city. They plan to cover 10,000 acres, an area equivalent to more than 5,500 soccer fields. Seeds from native species, such as tamarind, will be wrapped in balls of manure and soil before being dropped from the sky. Drones equipped with cameras will be used to geotag the area and monitor the progress of the project. Around a dozen native tree species have been chosen for the project, which scientists hope will help a forest flourish and encourage wildlife to return to the area. According to scientists, goats that graze on saplings, the dry climate and climate change are some of the biggest challenges to the project. Study says ocean farming could provide all the seafood we need. 
New research suggests that ocean farming could be enough to fill much of the global demand for seafood. Researchers suggest a farm area the size of Lake Michigan could satisfy the world's current demand for seafood. Their study says that an ocean area of 11.4 million square kilometers could satisfy fishing demands, while 1.4 square million kilometers would be needed for bivalve seafood, such as oysters. However, experts commenting on the study say that while space isn't a limitation for the expansion of ocean farming, costs for operation, production, and transportation could be. Climate change and how humans interact with large-scale ocean farms are another factor that could impact the feasibility of relying on ocean farming.